My name is Johanna Jarko, and uh, I'm a postdoctoral fellow at the NIMH, so the National Institute of Mental Health. And we are currently in a lovely old Victorian building that I call my office. My main goal is to study social anxiety in children to try to understand what are the neural mechanisms that are involved in either putting kids at risk for social anxiety or actually supporting and promoting social anxiety so that they become socially anxious when they're older as well. I didn't really know what I wanted to, to do until about my junior year. I took a summer school class with a professor and he was teaching a social psychology methods course, which I hadn't really been that interested in science in the past, but I was very interested in, in people and how people interact with one another. I really got very excited about the idea of doing research, experiments that really get at the type of questions that I was interested in asking. I happen to be in touch with a few people who are here at the NIMH, and I ended up being invited to come on as, as a postdoctoral fellow. I've seen and been friends with a lot of people who have social anxiety. I'm trying to really understand what are the mechanisms that really drive that feeling. We've been able to run a couple of studies, anxious and healthy kids, in a social context and really have them experience what it's like to feel social rejection, bullying, and also positive feedback from other kids in real time. The way that we collect a lot of our data is uh, through fMRI, functional magnetic resonance imaging. And what that requires us to do is to put children who are already pretty anxious into a large magnet. We are interested in looking at how kids' brains respond when they interact with people um, for the first time. And this is a national study with sites all over the country. What we do is we have kids come into uh, the clinic. Thank you for coming in today. The mock scanner is basically going to get you comfortable with the scanning environment when you're actually in the fMRI. So we have to be really sensitive so that they become comfortable with the physical environment so you'll just get used to kind of the closeness. We'll also play some noises for you that sound a lot like the ones that the MRI machine make. Okay, here we go. They go into the scanner and through different types of mirrors and projection systems, we're able to show them different stimuli. So now I'm just going to play you some scanner noises. So I'm going to give you the button box so that you can make your responses on the task. They read these sort of Yelp-like reviews about other kids, and then we tell them at your next visit you will attend the virtual school. Before that visit, the other students will have seen your avatar and read your personal profile. You'll get to rate the other kids. Your ratings will help us decide who will stay in the study. So each time someone is about to chat with you, a bubble will appear above their head. They can write whatever they'd like, and you will see what they say when they finish typing. Go ahead and press any button to start. To navigate to your response, you'll click the left or red button to move left, and the right or yellow button to move right. Press the blue button to choose your response. You don't have a whole lot of time to do this, so try to choose quickly. They're brought into different classrooms, and when they enter into a classroom, they already know who they're about to interact with. These are the nice kids, these are the mean kids, and these are the kids who are unpredictable, so we don't know what's up with them. What we're able to do is find brain regions that are engaged by anticipating social evaluation that's either positive, negative, or unpredictable. If I already know that kid is not very nice, I'm anticipating this very mean kind of uh, feedback, so you suck. All right, so you're all done. You did a great job. I'm going to pull you out. Right. Was that okay? Yeah, it's great. Great. Well, you did a wonderful job. You can go ahead and sit up. I'll see you when you come in for your real scan in a few days. Getting a new study designed off the ground. I love that. On days when I'm really lucky, I get to look at new data and run analyses that will let me see if the experiments that I've conducted actually work. So to me, that's, that's the fun stuff. So being able to press that button and figure out if all of the time that I put into um, this work actually kind of paid off, showed us something.
my passwords get nervous when other people are watching. These are some preliminary data from our group. So we see brain regions that we know are kind of implicated in detecting threat or conflict, so this dorsal region here, and also these other regions called the insula, which is associated with the expression or feeling of distress. What's really interesting about this is that um, this is over and above the type of activity that we see when they're anticipating something bad. So they know they're about to be bullied. That's not nearly as distressing as when they're anticipating this unpredictable social feedback. fMRI research is really in its toddlerhood at this point. A lot of kids have social anxiety when they're quite young, but many of them kind of uh, remit, so they don't actually become socially anxious adults. And we think that um, hopefully in my lifetime we'll be able to use um, the data that we collect from fMRI to identify those kids who are at most risk. I can't tell you how many times my current self has thanked my past self for having taken notes on certain things. Interact with as many people from different kinds of areas as you can to really find uh, what your passion is. Read broadly, take a lot of classes. Don't pressure yourself or pigeonhole yourself into one specific area. Just kind of explore your options and don't be afraid to try something new.